Psychology is a subject which pushes you to challenge all you think you know about human behaviour. Put simply, psychology is the study of human behaviour. Through the two years of this course, you'll be taught to use a mixture of different approaches to probe the reasons behind human thought and behaviour from the everyday to the extreme. What will I study? In your first year, you'll study six units. Uh, ultimately, psychology is a scientific discipline, so when you are studying the different theories of human behaviour, you will find that all of those theories are underpinned by psychological research. Therefore, it's really important that you've got an understanding of how to actually conduct psychological research, meaning that research methods is studied really early on in the course. In this unit, you would look at the scientific nature of psychology, how to select participants for research, uh, how to plan and conduct research, and all the different methods of studying human behaviour, including observations and experiments. You will also look at the code of conduct that researchers must follow, and the implications that psychological research can have on society. This is where math skills can become really important, as when you conduct research, you'll end up with data, which then needs analysing. So in year one, you'll look at some basic data analysis techniques and you'll then revisit these in year two where you'll learn about inferential statistical tests that researching psychologists often use to determine the significance of their findings. You will have to learn how to calculate some of these and how to determine which of these different statistical tests you should choose. Another unit that you'll study is Approaches in Psychology. Again, most of this is taught in Year 1 and then you'll revisit this in Year 2 to expand on your knowledge even further. The Approaches unit will open your eyes to opposing views that psychologists hold and here you'll look at the big movements in psychology from its origins as a science in Leipzig, Germany in 1879 all the way through to modern day psychology. You'll examine how varied the approaches to understanding human behaviour are, from behaviourist psychologists who believe that all behaviour is learned from birth onwards, all the way to biopsychologists who believe that human biology is the driving force of behaviour. Ultimately, you'll study a huge range of ideas um, from brain structures to biological rhythms to thought processes and the unconscious mind in this unit. Other topics you'll study in your first year include social influence, which looks at conformity and obedience, including the infamous experiments conducted by Milgram and Zimbardo. This unit will really challenge you to think about all that you know about human nature, uh, to understand who is really in control of your behaviour. You'll also take a unit on memory, which examines key models of how we think your memory works, and studies factors which can have a positive or a negative impact on the accuracy of your memory. You'll study theories of forgetting, including amnesia, and look at techniques to improve memory recall, which are often used in forensic interviewing. Attachment and psychopathology are the other two units that you'll study. Most students are quite keen to study the psychopathology, which is the study of mental disorders in terms of their causes, the development of them, uh, the classification and treatment. We will look at a range of disorders, including phobias, depression and OCD. In attachment psychology, you will study the emotional bond that forms between infant and caregiver. You'll examine the different types of attachment and the stages in which they form, as well as the different theories of why they form. The most interesting part of this unit, however, is the impact that those attachments or lack of can have upon your adult life. We'll look at some of the potentially disastrous consequences of this when studying deprivation and privation. In your second year, you'll revisit the approaches and research methods, as mentioned, and build upon them in greater detail with the biopsychology aspect expanding into its own unit, and then you'll study an additional four units. In one of these units, you'll learn to debate around the explanations of human behaviour. Are we a product of nature or nurture? Do we ever truly have free will, or is all behaviour predetermined? Some of your second year units are known as options, uh, and we as a college generally study cognition and development, schizophrenia, and forensic psychology. 
in cognition and development, you will look in greater detail at some internal mental processes and how they develop through your lifetime and the impact this has on your behaviour and then how this underpins behaviours associated with particular disorders such as autism. Your studies of schizophrenia will focus on the various explanations for the disorder, the symptoms, classification and treatments of this particular disorder. And the final unit, Forensic Psychology, examines explanations of turning to crime, offender profiling and the psychological effects of punishment and reform. Will I go on any trips? There is access to a range of both internal enrichment activities and external trips in psychology. Popular internal enrichment includes the Behind the Bars conference where students have had the opportunity to apply their study of forensic psychology to real life by speaking with ex-offenders and forensic psychologists. We have also held live brain dissections and lectures on neurobiology with Dr Guy Sutton. There are also external trips, for example, in conjunction with criminology, students have had the opportunity to see the Knife Angel sculpture and took part in a workshop on knife crime, in which he would be able to apply understanding of psychological change and forensic psychology. We have also run trips to local universities, such as UCLan, to have a taste of studying the social sciences in higher education. A popular trip this year has been our Chester Zoo excursion, which is not only a chance to get a day at the zoo, but also to attend workshops such as that on primate behaviour, which underpins some of the research you'll study on the concepts that you'll learn in attachment. How will I be assessed? As a college, we sit AS exams where we can in subjects, meaning that at the end of your first year, you will sit two one and a half hour exams that will examine you on the six units that you've studied in year one. At the end of year two, you'll sit three two-hour exams which will test you on all knowledge from the 11 units you've studied across the two years of your A-level. What are the entry requirements? Five grade fives and above, including maths and English. Because of the essay-based nature of the subject, we suggest that your English is to a higher level and you are comfortable with this type of assessment method. Additionally, we require that two of those grade fives be in a science and a maths, given that psychology is a science, and so there will be some need to complete scientific research and use analytical mindsets to plan and evaluate that research, and of course, some mathematical skill in analysing the data from that research. Out of your sciences, the most appropriate one to gain a five in would be biology, given that there is a whole unit that studies biological processes, but it may be that you get a five in your chemistry or physics instead. Where could this subject lead? When studying psychology, the possibilities are endless in terms of your next steps. As psychology is the study of human thought and behaviour, this subject is extremely useful even if you do not intend to pursue psychology in the future. And past students have gone on to use this in medicine, business, marketing, HR, sport, policing and more. If psychology is your primary passion though, there are a number of routes that students go on to, most of which involve study at higher education. Many of our students go on to study psychology as either a single or a joint honours at university and this then opens up a number of career avenues. Some have chosen more focused degrees in forensic psychology or counselling. Additionally, students are able to study up to masters or PhD level in any of the main areas of psychology including clinical, educational, sports, neuro, forensic and counselling psychology should they wish to become a practising chartered psychologist. Ultimately, in any job where you'll be working with people, psychology will help you.